Season's greetings. The Cartesian product of a set A with the intersection of two sets B and C is equal to the intersection of A cross B with A cross C. So it turns out Cartesian products distribute over set intersection. That's pretty cool. Let's prove it in today's lesson. You'll need to be comfortable with the definition of set intersection and with the Cartesian product of sets. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons on those topics if you need a recap. This is a pretty basic set theory proof where we just have to repeatedly apply definitions until we reach our conclusion. So I encourage you to give it a try yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. The basic structure of this proof is that we've got to show the set on the left is a subset of the set on the right. That's what we're going to do first is prove this. Then we have to prove that subset relation in the other direction. We've got to prove that the set on the right is a subset of the set on the left. If both the sets are subsets of each other, then they've got to be equal sets. So let's start with this one. We'll prove that the set on the left is a subset of the set on the right. To prove that subset relationship, we need to start with an arbitrary element from the set on the left and show that element also belongs to the set on the right. To take an arbitrary element from a Cartesian product, you got to know what Cartesian products are. It's the set of all ordered pairs where the first element comes from the set on the left and the second element in the ordered pair comes from the set on the right. So we'll take this arbitrary element from the Cartesian product, we'll call it AE. This ordered pair AE is an element of the set on the left, A cross B intersect C. I've called the first element little a because by definition of Cartesian product, little a has to belong to the set big A. The element on the right of the ordered pair, I've just called E for element. By definition of Cartesian product, this second element in the ordered pair must belong to the set on the right. It's the second element in the ordered pair, so it must belong to the second set in the Cartesian product. So A is an element of big A, and the element E is in this set, B intersect C. E is an element of B intersect C. Now little a being in the set big A, that just means exactly what it says. But what about this piece over here? A being an element of B intersect C, what's that mean? By definition of set intersection, that means that E is an element of B and E is an element of C. That's the only way that E could be in the intersection of the two sets. It's got to belong to both of them. Okay, let's keep our attention on the goal post here, right? We're trying to show that the element AE, that ordered pair, is an element of this set intersection. So what comes next? Well, if E is an element of B, and little a is an element of big A, then certainly the ordered pair A, E must be an element of the Cartesian product of A cross B. This is an element of A cross B. Again, that's because A is an element of the set A and E is an element of the set B. So the ordered pair A, E has to be in A cross B. But similarly, since E is an element of the set C, the ordered pair A, E also has to belong to the Cartesian product A cross C. So this is an element of A cross C. And again, that's because the element little a is in the set big A and the element E is in the set C. So the ordered pair A, E is an element of the Cartesian product A cross C. Then we're pretty much there, right? If this ordered pair is in A cross B and 
it's in A cross C, then by definition, it's an element of the intersection of the Cartesian products. So we have that the ordered pair AE is an element of A cross B intersected with A cross C because it's an element of both of those sets. And so we have established this first subset relation. We're halfway there. So we just took an element from A cross B intersect C and repeatedly applied some definitions to show that it's also an element of A cross B intersect A cross C. And so we've proven this first subset relationship. To prove the other direction, it's actually just all of these statements, but backwards. So as long as you understood these statements one way, hopefully you can understand it the other way too. I'll give you a second to pause the video and try to prove this second direction on your own. Like I said, it's just these steps, but in reverse. Hopefully you gave it a try. Let me walk you through the logic now. We would of course begin the proof of this subset relationship by taking an arbitrary element from the set on the left. So suppose that the ordered pair AE is an arbitrary element of this intersection. I know that the elements of that intersection are ordered pairs because it's an intersection of Cartesian products. Cartesian products only have ordered pairs, so any arbitrary element has got to be an ordered pair. Okay, so here's my arbitrary element of this intersection. But if AE is an element of this intersection, then by definition, it's got to be an element of the two sets that are getting intersected. So AE is an element of A cross B, and AE is an element of A cross C. All right, well then, if AE is in the set A cross B, by definition of Cartesian product, that means the element on the left is an element of the set on the left. So little a is an element of the set big A. Similarly, the element on the right, E, has to be an element of the set on the right, B. So E is an element of B. And again, that's just by definition of Cartesian product. Apply the same logic over here. The element on the left, A, is an element of the set A. We already knew that. The element on the right is an element of the set on the right. E is an element of C, by definition of Cartesian product. But if E is an element of B and E is an element of C, by definition of set intersection, E is an element of B intersect C. But then, if A is an element of A and E is an element of B intersect C, then by definition of Cartesian product, the ordered pair AE is an element of the Cartesian product of those two sets. E is in B intersect C, A is in A, and so the Cartesian product AE is an element of that Cartesian product. So, same steps, but in reverse, that proves that the intersection of A cross B with A cross C is a subset of A cross B intersect C. Then we're done. We've proven that the Cartesian product does indeed distribute over set intersections.